하나님 감사합니다. Dear God, we give you thanks. 오늘도 저희들에게 귀한 생명의 말씀 주심을 감사드립니다. Thank you for calling us, giving us a precious message of life. 하나님 하나님께 주신 이 말씀이 우리에게 그대로 성취되는 축복의 역사가 임하게 하여 주옵소서. At this time, may the blessings come forth where the word of God become fulfilled. 이 말씀을 붙들고 기도하는 자마다 부활하신 주님이 체험되는 축복 역사가 임하게 하여 주옵소서. And any of those that are having this, hang on to this message and pray, may they experience the God who is living in their life. 하나님의 자녀 된이 축복을 기쁨으로 체험하는 축복의 시간이 되게 하여 주옵소서. And this time, help us to enjoy the blessings and help us to understand that there is a blessing as a child of God. 말씀을 증거한 자부터 리시고. 성령으로 충만하게 역사하여 주시옵소서. 감사드리며 살아계신 예수님의 이름으로 기도합니다. 아멘. <웃음> 아, 오늘은 아, 성가대 찬양이 아주 이렇게 참 아름답게 이렇게 들렸습니다. Uh, 아, 그 갈보리 십자가에 매달리신 우리 예수님에 대한 찬양이라서 더욱 더 그런 것 같습니다. It was a message about Mount Calvary. 어떤 또 우리 렘던트들이 이 악기를 보는데 악기가 얼마나 참 감미로운지 아주 참 이렇게 기분이 너무나 참 증거, 어, 즐겁고 행복했습니다. And it's always good to see the remnants playing their instrument and how they add to the choir and it's a beautiful praise all together. 하나님의 큰 축복이 있길 바랍니다. I truly do believe that, that there will be great blessings. <웃음> 아, 지난 <웃음> 지난주 어, 우리 중지자 대원에서 우리 그 이, 이 교회사에서 나타난 순교자들에 대한 그런 그 메시지를 우리가 들었었습니다. Last week's message we heard about the uh, the people, the missionaries that was martyred within their missions. 아, 그걸 들으면서 참 아, 은혜를 이렇게 너무나 많이 받았었습니다. That, you know, really 저는 그걸 보면서 아, 우리나라에 최초로 들어온 선교사에 대해 사만 이렇게 생각을 해봤습니다. I t h o u 우리나라에 최초로 들어온 선교사님이 바로 영국에서 오신 그 로버트 토마스 선교사님인데 그분도 역시 순교를 당했던 것으로 우리 잘 알고 있습니다. And the very first individual that came to mission as a missionary was a British minister uh, called Robert Thomas. 저는 그 분의 이제 전기를 이렇게 쭉 보면서 참지 또 이렇게 감동을 받았습니다. It's a very interesting story, and uh, just kind of looking into that story, you know, I was very touched and I was very blessed. 그양반이 1865년도에 이그 서해 바다에 있는 그 백령도 근처에 와서 처음에 이렇게 어 복음을 전했다고 합니다. The first, the very first time that he entered Korea was in 1865 when he uh, entered Pyongyang Island. 이 와서 그어그 어, 농가에 들어가지 그때 성경책을 중국어로 번역된 그 성경책을 200권을 버치면서 그 전도를 하면서. 한글도 배우고 이렇게 선교 활동을 했다고 합니다. For him, he was a missionary serving, um, you know, within uh, that place. What he had carried, he had 200 Chinese Bibles, and he gave it out to the people in Korea. And then also, um, you know, he himself learned Korean while he was there for a while. 그래서 이제 다시 여의치가 나가지고 다시 이제 그 중국으로 돌아가서 이제 그 때를 잠깐 노리다가 1866년 고 다음 해 2월달에 아 9월달에 마침 이 미국에 있는 미국 급의 그 제너럴 시어먼호가 한국으로 간다는 얘기 듣고 내가 통역으로 가겠다 하고 자원하면서 이게 신청을 했다고 합니다. The story was is that you know uh, that's this is one when when Korea uh, when America was actually entering Korea uh, Peninsula, uh, he volunteered to be a translator for General Sherman, uh, the Sherman uh, Division, I believe, um, to to go as a translator with him. 근데 이 배는 이 장사하는 배인데 이, 이 배에 이 포가 달려 있어 가지고 어 이게 무장을 한 그런 배였었습니다. And this is a very big ship. Uh, it's a Sherman. Uh, the name of the ship was Sherman and um, you know it carried a lot of weight and it was just a big big ship. 그래 와 가지고 이제 서로 간에 약간 문제가 생겨 가지고 이제 그이 광군하고 
그 싸움이 벌어지게 되는데 그래서 결국은 이그 이 많은 사람들이 체포를 당하게 됩니다. Long story short, there was a problem in the conflict, and the people that was within that boat were arrested, and including the people that were arrested was missionary, was missionary Robert Thomas. 그런데 이 통역으로 왔던 이그 토마스 선교사님은 이 자기 통역이 목적이 아니라 이 선교가 목적이기 때문에 그이 전쟁한 그, 그 중간에 성경 책을 하여튼 있는 대로 그냥 막 육지에 막 집어 던지면서 하여튼 성경 보도록 이렇게 막그 애를 썼다고 그래요. For him, what Thomas's intention was not to be a translator. You know, for him, he had an opportunity to, to be a missionary. Um, so, but but as he was in that mission or on the boat trip, he tried to give out as much Bible as possible to have people uh, have most exposure of the Bible as possible. 마침내 이게 제너럴 쇼먼허가 이제 그 폭발을 당하고 나중에 그 거기 있는 사람들이 이게 체포를 당하게 됩니다. And at the at the end of it all, you know, that, that he was within the conflict and he was arrested and he was held prisoner. 그 거기에 이제 이 토마스 선교사님도 같이 이렇게 어그 이제 사형을 당하게 된 것이죠. And what happened was that he was captured. 근데 이제 이그 선교사님이 이 체포를 당하게 돼 무릎을 꿇고 이제 목을 이렇게 내놓지 않습니까? And what ended up happening is that uh, you know this missionary was caught by as a prisoner and they decided to execute him so they were about to behead him so he was on his knees about to be beheaded. 그러니까 이제 그 목을 내고 하는데 그, 그 칼을 든 사람이 박충건이라는 그런 사람인데 칼 들고 이제 목을 칠라고 이제 이렇게 칼을 들었단 말이에요. And the executioner that was about to execute this missionary was Park Chung Soon and he was about to cut his head off. 근데 이 칠라 그런데 이 통해서 소마 선교사님이 잠깐만 하고 이제 이렇게 그 얘기를 했다. And Robert Thomas who kind of stopped him before he was about to sing is like, wait, I have something to tell you. 그네들 보면서 웃으면서 하나님은 당신을 사랑하십니다. 하면서 자기 품에 있던 성경 저거 꺼내 가지고 이렇게. 이 박충건 씨한테 이렇게 박충건이라는 사람한테 준 거예요. And Robert Thomas, before he said, he smiled at him, saying that God loves you, and he gave his only Bible that he had to Park Chung Bong. 그러니까 이 박충건이가 그 성경을 받지 않고 그냥 팽개쳐버린다 말이에요. For him, he was about to execute a man, so he didn't care what what he got. He just ended up killing him afterwards. 그러니까 이그이 어, 토마스 선교사님이 거기서 그걸로 끝내지 않고. 무릎을 꿇고 기도를 시작하신 거예요. For him, when Robert uh, saw this, you know, he he wasn't. Disappointed, he wasn't frustrated. What he did is he he got the Bible. The executioner got his Bible, just threw it away. Uh, so Robert ended up getting his knees and praying. Be finally before he was executed. 기도 내용은 하나님 이 사람이 자기 하는 일을 알지 못하고 모르오니 이 사람을 용서해 주시옵소서. 복음의 땅에 뿌린 복음의 씨앗이 헛되지 않게 해 주시옵소서. 하면서 하나 앞에 간절히. And this missionary's last prayer was saying, "God, forgive this man because he does not know what he's doing. Uh, let not the seed of the gospel we sowed be in vain." 이제 기도하고 이제 딱 끝나는데 이 칼로 쳐가지고 마침내 이 토마스 선교사님 목에 이렇게 떨어지게 됩니다. And Thomas, after praying this prayer, the executioner cut his head off. 참그 순간에 그 죽음에 대해서 두려움을 두려움을 그 두려워하지 않고. 거기서 그 안에 하나님 바라보면서 기도할 수 있었다는 자체가 정말 참 대단하신 분이다. It's very surprising, you know, for Robert Thomas as a missionary, when you're about to be killed, you know, the first thing that you think about is fear, you panic, you know, think about all these things. But for him, his his actions and reaction was that he prayed. His final thing that he wanted to do was pray before God, and that to me was very amazing. 정말 하나님을 사랑하고 그이 조선 땅이라는 이 사람들을 사랑하고 영혼을 사랑하지 않으면은. 어떻게 그 자리에서 그렇게 기도할 수가 있었겠느냐? If he didn't have such passion, uh, and if he didn't have such heart, care, and concern, even love to for the gospel and to actually care about these people, you know, nobody would be that stupid enough to go out, you know, to a country he does not know to be executed. 그 선교사님이 그 순교를 당한 후에 30년 지난 1899년에 한 사람이 그그 그 평양에 <웃음> 마페 선교사님이란 분이 계셨는데 그분이 몸은 여관에 한 사람이 찾아온 거예요. What happened was in 1899 is that there was an individual, another missionary that that came in, uh, that went to that same island as a missionary. 그 마페 선교사님을 보면서 얘기를 하면서 정말 내가 너무나 괴로워서 못 살겠습니다. When this missionary came to, uh, you know, this this, well, so he went into a hotel room and some some gentleman approached him saying that, you know, I can't. I can't live like this for the rest of my life. 내가 어떻게 하면 좋겠습니까? And and so that man saying, well, what what should I do? Because I'm so miserable and I'm in so much pain and misery right now. 내가 바로 
그 토모사, 토마스 선교사님을 죽인 바로 그 범인이 바로 접니다. 그렇게 외치면서 그 사람이 준, 나한테 성경책 준 분이 바로 그분이었습니다. 하면서 이렇게 거기서 그 마필 선교사님한테 고백을 합니다. And, and the man that came up to Matt, uh, this uh, minister, uh, Matt Mathis, is that he's like, I was the one who actually executed a missionary just like you. And for 30 years, I've been in suffering. And I have his Bible, and I don't know what I'm supposed to do with my entire life. 바페 선교사님은 그 얘기를 듣고 그분에게 복음을 전하고 그분이 정말로 충성스러운 교인 성도가 되도록 했죠. After the missionary heard this, he have him, he preached the gospel to him. He had accepted Jesus Christ, and that executioner, uh, so to speak, became a very important church member later on. 이 박충권이라는 이 사람은 나중에 장대현 교회 장로님이 돼서 전도자로서 평양을 복음화시키기 위해서 모든 전력을 다 쏟았던 사람이 바로 장대현 장로님이십니다. And this 박충권 장로님이십니다. And this this uh, 박충권 became an elder, you know, actually a very important member of a of a reestablished or very new a church that they had within that island. So he was a very important figure, very important person to evangelize within that region. 토마스 선교사님 오셔가지고 별로 이렇게 개인적으로 많이 하는 일도 없는 것 같아요. When you look at it, you know, he came by and he gave him, he told this gentleman, the executioner, two sentences, and that's all he did. 근데 이상하죠. 그 토마스 선교사님 그 뿌린 그 성경책, 그 많은 그 성경책을 그 믿고 예수를 그거 그걸 읽고 믿고 장로가 된 사람들이 한두 명이 아니라는 거예요. 난 이제 알고 보니까. The what's important is beyond his faith. He had the faith of the gospel. What was important about his action? What did he do to get there? And even the, even the smallest action that he took, it had multiple seasons, hundreds of believers and hundreds of people that were saved because of that small thing. 그 마페 선교사님이 그, 그 머물렀다고 하는 그 호텔, 그 여관, 그 여관의 그 주인이 그, 그 토마스 선교사님으로부터 받은 그 성경책을 갖다가 종이가 없으면 도배를 해가지고 벽에다 붙였던 사람이 바로 그 주입 주인이었어요. It's interesting story because of that one small, small seed where you think, well, uh, how, how, how is throwing a Bible? How is that going to save anybody? So the interesting thing is when Thomas entered within that hotel, uh, because the walls were very expensive to make, they had uh, paper. They would, they would cover the wallpaper with, with just regular pieces of paper on the wall. 그러니까 뭐 당시에는 종이가 많이, 많이 없으니까 아마 그냥 없으니까 그냥 And the irony about this hotel was that um, you know, with, when you look at the wallpaper, the paper that they used was the actual Bible that Thomas, you know, uh, gave to them, and they didn't think of it much. But the entire the entire wall, so to speak, was covered in uh, covered with the Bible as Word of God. 근데 그그 영안에 그 잠자로 들어왔던 모든 사람들이 가서 그 그걸 성경 벽에 붙어 있는 거 성경을 읽고. 예수님을 영접하는 그런 일이 생겼단 말이에요 거기서. For those people that actually slept within this hotel, it's actually a miracle because a lot of people actually read the Bible literally that's on the wall, and, and a lot of people were saved. A lot of people actually believed in God because of this one simple thing that He did. 그 여관의 그때 당시에 그 주인이 채치량이라고 하는 그 사람이 그 주인인데 그 사람이 마침내 자기가 은혜를 받아가지고 그 자기 그 여관을 하나님께 드려버립니다. For the owner of this hotel, you know, she was so touched because something ha happened. It changes. You know, people change when she when they enter the hotel. So she was shocked, and she also was a, a person of God afterwards. And she actually gave that building up to God for for His purpose. 그 이제 사람들이 오게 되니 믿는 사람들이 모이게 되니까 그그그그 여관이 나중에 확장을 해가지고 그 유명한 1907년대 평양 대부흥회를 일으켰던 장대현 교회가 되게 되는 거예요. And that end was a very important piece of the architect, or important piece within this, because that 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 building ended up becoming a Chang Dae Young Church, which was the very important revival meeting within Pyongyang in 1907. 그 토마스 선교사님이 준 성경책을 붙여가지고 그 도배를 했던 그집그 집이 난지는 교회로 바뀌어가지고 수많은 사람들이 은혜를 받고 거기서 평 평양이 일어나게 되는 그 축복을 받게 됩니다. The thing you have to understand is what the action, the action, the, even the smallest action that Thomas took, even though he just gave a Bible away and that's all he did, but that simple Bible had a power and an effect to move an entire city. 아니 뭐뭐 뭐 성경책마다 다 뜯어가지고 벽지를 한번 그 뭐다 그럼 축복 받겠습니까? <웃음> and a lot of people will, who are skeptical saying, how can You, you know, you're giving a Bible away, a piece of paper on a wall. How can that change the world? But that's, you're missing the point. 저는 <웃음> 그 성경책이 똑같은 성경책이지만은 그 성경책은 다른 성경책이 아니라 토마스 선교사님이 
순교하기 바로 전에 하나님 앞에 기도하면서 이 성경책을 통해서 많은 사람들이 이 복음의 씨앗이 헛되지 않게 해달라는 그 기도 소리를 하나님께서 들으시고 응답하신 것이 아니냐 What's important about it is, is, is beyond the action is how it got there and what it did to get there. Thomas, it wasn't just a regular Bible that they wrote. It was Thomas. It was within his prayers, within his wish, you know, within his heart and intention to evangelize within that place. And that was the Bible that he had. And that in, intent, that action was a result of what happened afterwards. 다시 한번 마음에 깊이 오는 것이 영혼을 향한 뜨거운 기도는 반드시 하나님께서 응답하신다는 것을 the, 다시 한번 생각해. The importance behind this action was his prayer. You know how he prayed, what he prayed for, what he, what Thomas really wanted was he wanted to save people. He really wanted the gospel to go out into the other worlds. That was his prayer, and his action followed beyond his prayer. 보통 순교당하면 죽인다고 칼을 갖다 목을 내놓으면서 칼을 치게 된 무서 벌벌 떠면서 참막 살려달라고 발버둥을 쳐야 될 판인데 그 순간에 웃으면서. 품에 있는 것을 성경에 꺼내면서 인피드라고 그러면서 하나님은 당신을 사랑합니다. 이게 보통 이 뜨거운 사랑입니까? The, the first thing that you have to understand is, is fear. If, if somebody is going to kill you, believe me, you will be afraid. And, and you will panic. And the last thing that you're going to think of is, well, just, since this guy is going to kill me, I'm going to give you a Bible. That's the last thing on your mind. But for him, you know, he really cared. He really loved people. He really means it. And he actually gave the Bible before to the guy that was about to kill him. 한국에 최초로 복음을 전하는 그 선교사님이 그런 뜨거운 열정으로 조선 땅을 사랑하셔가지고 그 선교의 피를 흘려가지고 이 민족이 한국이 살게 됐단 말이에요. The, the very first missionaries that came to Korea died. He was murdered. But that blood of that missionary was because of his blood that the entire Korea it was a gate of, of people of salvation and revival and gospel to come in. 지금도 우리가 믿고 이렇게 지금 하나님 자녀라고 하면서 기뻐하는 것은 그때 그 선교의 피. 그 순교하신 그분의 기도의 응답으로 우리가 지금 이렇게 살게 된 줄을 믿습니다. If Thomas had not died that day, you will not be sitting here. As a matter of fact, 95% of us will not even heard about God. We will not even know about God if had if he had that done that. So that's the butterfly effect till now. 간절한 기도는 반드시 응답하시죠. If you sincerely pray and if you really mean it, mean it, something will happen. 왜 그렇습니까? Why? Because God is alive. Because God has resurrected and He is alive. You know, God wants to answer your prayer. God is listening to prayer and He wants to answer them. And as we continue to listen that God who has resurrected, God is alive. And as we read the Bible verse today, 이 여자들이 무덤에 들어가지 않습니까? And as the women go, go towards the, the, the burial of Jesus Christ. 근데 오늘 오전 말씀하니까 무덤에 그러니까 신호 신호 세부로 한 청년이 그 무덤 속에 들어 있다고 얘기를 하고 있는 거예요. And it was interesting because when they entered the tomb there was a young man clothed in white cloth. 근데 여긴 기록되어 있지 않습니다만은 마태복음 28장 2절 3절 말씀 보게 되면은 큰 그때 당시에 큰 지진이라고 막 시작하더니 주의 천사가 하늘로부터 내려와 가지고 돌을 굴려냈다고 얘기를 하고 있어요. In Matthew 28, 23, it kind of explains a little bit more in detail what happens. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for the angels came, the Lord descended from heaven, and they came down rolling the stones of the door. 굴로 내려와 가지고 한한 사람 한 천사는 그 굴에 앉아 있고 하나는 굴 속으로 들어가는 거예요. What, what, so there were a couple of angels that went, were that came to the the body of Jesus Christ. One of them opened the door of the body of Jesus Christ. One actually entered into the tomb of Jesus. 근데 그 모양을 보니까 번개와 같고 막 옷을 그 옷이 얼마나 흰지. 그 신눈처럼 바짝바짝 거리는 흰 옷을 이렇게 입고 있더라고 이렇게 얘기하거든요. His countenance was like lightning and his clothing as white as snow. 이 천사가 이 돌을 굴려낸 걸 나는 거죠. So an angel moved the door. 이 천사가 이게 내려오게 되니까 그 번개 같은 형상을 보고 그 무덤을 지키던 군, 군인들은 막 완전히 죽은 자 같이 됐다고 얘기를 했어요. An earthquake first of all that comes you will panic if there's an earthquake and on top of that angels coming to you with bright lightning star you will pass out which is exactly what the guards did. 이게 살아서 눈은 뜨고 있는데 완전히 죽은 상태라 꼼짝 못 하는 막 죽은 자들 딱 완전히 그이 경격돼 있는 걸 나타내고 있는 거예요. They were paralyzed with fear. They could not move because they were so afraid. And because they saw this angel that was moving this tomb. 그러니까 막 여자들이 지금 막 들어가고 막 그렇게 하는데도 뭐라 꼼짝 못 하고 아무 말도 못 하고 그냥 코대로 얼어 있는 상태로 있는 걸 나타내. And for them, they were so paralyzed with fear that there were people walking into the tomb which they weren't supposed to, but they couldn't do anything because they're just they're so afraid. They're just like, what is going on? 여기서 우리가 잡아야 될 것이 있습니다. The thing that you have to understand here. 왜 천사가 돌을 굴렸을까 하는 거예요? Why would the angel open the door? 예수님이 안에 계시니까 나오게 하기 위해서 그 
돌을 굴려 있겠습니까? Because Jesus was inside, the angel thought that they had it was a mandate for them to open that door. 예수님을 나오게 하기 위해서 굴린 것이 아니었죠. It's not because they wanted to bring Jesus Christ out. 이미 부활하신 예수님은 완전히 우리와 그 다른 차원의 예수님인 것을 우리는 알고 있어요. When Jesus Christ was resurrected again from his death, he is a complete different being. He is a complete different person. 요한복음 2장 19절에 나온 나와 마찬가지로 이 제자들이 무서워 가지고 막그 다락방에 숨어 가지고 막 유대인들이 잡으러 올까 봐 문을 꼭꼭 닫아 담그고 막 숨어 있는 그 순간에 예수님께서 갑자기 중간에 나타나실 거예요. In John 2019 this is when you know all the disciples panic they were all afraid because you know they 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 think that the Pharisees were going to kill him and execute him they were hiding inside the marks of a room and then Jesus all of a sudden and enters out of nowhere saying peace be with you. 보통 사람들이 들어오면 문을 똑똑 두드리면서 야문 열어라 하고 얘기를 해야 될거 아니에요 원래. As a human being, un- unless you could do like a hyperloop, you you have to enter through the door. You have to knock to go through a door to enter into. 내문 두드리지도 않고 갑자기들이 제자들인데 갑자기 중간에 뚝 서고 있단 말이에요. So it was kind of interesting because Jesus wanted to either play a prank on him or troll him, whatever it is. But all of a sudden, they were panic and fear, and right then and there, just say peace with you out of nowhere. 그러니까 예수님이 바로 이렇게 신령한 몸으로 이미 되셨다는 걸 나타내는 거예요. And Jesus Christ became something else, something new, something different. 이 부활하신 몸, 이 신령한 몸이 바로 우리가 똑같이 그렇게 될줄 믿습니다. And this is something that you also have when you become a new creation a new being. 아 예수님이 그런 신령 몸인데 아 돌을 천사가 굴려야만 나오시겠습니까? Meaning that you know Jesus can go go through walls, right? He he could project himself through walls. So in that in that sense, then the angel technically didn't really need to open the door because he could just go past that door. 천사들이 돌을 굴린 것은 예수님께서 나오라고 하신 것이 아니라 여자들이나 베드로나 요한이 가서 확인할 수 있도록 하기 위해서 천사들이 열어 놓은 거예요. The importance of the, the, the tomb door being open was not for Jesus Christ to come out. It was actually for the people to verify witness um, be, uh, because human beings can't go through walls. 이 무지한 자들, 믿음이 없는 자들, 이들에게 정말 현장을 보고 확인을 해라 하면서 믿음을 주기 위해서 천사들이 뭐 열어 놓던 열어 놓은 거란 말이에요. Simply it wasn't for Jesus Christ. It was actually for the people, the disciples, the people who didn't really believe in Jesus Christ that well didn't understand but for them to literally see with their own eyes the tomb stone open and Jesus is gone. He's no longer there. 문을 열어 놓고 그, 그 돌문 열어 놓고 가만히 있지 않고 천사들 천사가 또이 직접 또이 여자들한테 얘기하는 게 나왔다. And what was more surprising was that you know if it was empty, you know, you could be like well, you know, somebody stole the body or something could have done that, but actually there was an angel inside the tomb that was even more shocking. When they entered that tomb. 제일 먼저 한 말이 뭐냐니까 놀라지 말라 하면서 얘기를 하는 거예요. The first thing that this angel or this person said to said to angel and the Mary and said, um, "Don't be afraid. Don't be alarmed." 보통 인간이 아니라 번개 같은 형상을 가진 시고 빛나는 그 옷을 입은 이 천사가 딱 해가지고 그러니까 얼마나 막 놀랐겠다. 기절할 정도로 놀라 말이야. For them, if you see an angel, I'm pretty sure you'll be surprised too. So that's why the first thing that angel said, "Chill out." Don't be surprised. You know, don't be surprised. I am here. Yes, I am here. 죄인은 우리들은 밤의 범석 앞에 서, 설 수도 없는 그런 입장이란 말이에요. It's a presence where you know it's like you, if, if you committed a, a, a hideous crime and you're standing before a judge, right? That fear, that 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 paralysis. 그때 이그 천사가 지금 이그 여자들 향해서 놀라지 말라. 다시 말씀드리면요, 요한복음에 무서워하지 말라 하고 얘기하는 거예요. Very simply put, you know, the angel said, you know, you know, don't be alarmed or Don't be afraid and say, you know, it's okay. I'm fine. I'm not going to hurt you. That type of thing. 지금 병사들은 그냥 보자마자 얼어가지고 완히 죽은 자 같이 돼 있는데 예수님을 따르는 자에게는 와서 와서 하는 얘기가 놀라지 말라, 두려워하지 말라 하고 위로의 말씀입니다. It's interesting because when the angels came to see, the, the soldiers were panicked. I mean, these guys were just completely in fear, paralyzed. They couldn't move. But when the women came by, you know, the angels said, you know, don't be alarmed, don't be afraid. 그 뭡니까? 너희는 기뻐해라. 가장 즐거워할 사건이 일어났다. 하는 것을 지금 알려주기 위해서 지금 천사하는 얘기 아니에요? Because angel wanted to say that you know don't be surprised of me. Actually, I have a good news to tell. You. I have something good to tell you. So beyond me, listen to what I have to say. 그럼 천사 얘기하면 너희가 십자가에 못 박히신 나사렛 예수를 찾는구나 하면서 얘기라고요. What the angel said, you seek the Jesus of Nazareth who was crucified. 그러니까 벌써 이, 나, 이 천사는 벌써 이 무슨 목적으로 온지를 다 알고 있는 거예요. 천사는. Angel, so the angel knew of why they were here. It's not some random people, so they knew that who they were and they knew why they were there. 나사렛 예수를 찾는구나 이게. You seek Jesus of Nazareth. 
아, 예수님께서 나사렛 지방에서 사역하시던 그걸 다 알고 있는 천사란 말이에요. Yes, it's an angel that knew about everything about Jesus Christ. 이 나사렛 지방 저 시골 동네 얘기하지 않습니까? Nazareth is a very small town which nobody knows about simply. 이 유대인들도 알아주지 않았던 땅이 바로 그런 말이에요. It's a very small town which the Jews do not know. So meaning that this angel knew about Jesus Christ. 그 요한복음 1장 46절을 봐서 보게 되면은 나다네엘이라는 사람이 나타납니다. 나사렛에서 무슨 선한 일이 일어나겠느냐 하면서 어, 얘기를 하는 적이 있어요. In John 1:46, and Nathaniel said to him, "Can anything come come good out of Nazareth?" So it's, it's in other words, it's a very small rural town which nobody has ever heard of. 저 시골 벽촌 그 시골 사람들 정말 무식한 그 동네 그 동네 있었던 그 동네에서 태어났던 나사렛 예수를 얘기하고 있는 거죠. And for them, it was almost like a like a third world country where you know nothing there, nothing good can come out of there, and and for them to even know what Nazareth is, is they know who he is. 그분이 바로 예수 그리스도 아니냐 십자가에 못 박히신 예수 그리스도 아니냐 하면서 어, 얘기를 하고 있는 거죠. What they were saying is that Jesus Christ of Nazareth, he's the one who crucified on the cross, and he is the one that died. So the angel knew who he was exactly. 천사가 그걸로 끝나지 않고 그가 살아나셨고. 여기 계시지 아니 아니라 하고 얘기를 하고. The angel said, to continue on saying that he has risen. Simply, he's not here. 그럼 살아났다는 거 아니에요? The... 요한복음 2장 6절 7절 말씀 보게 되면 이 제자들 그 여자들 아니까 무덤은 딱 비어 있는데 잘 정돈돼 있었다고 이렇게 되어 있어요. It's interesting in John 26:7 it says, um, you know, Simon Peter came following him into the tomb and they saw a linen cloth there and the handkerchief has been around his head, not lying in linen clothes, but folded together by the place by itself. 무덤 안에 그들 아니까 비어 있었고 잘 정돈되어 있다는 건 뭡니까? 혹시 어떤 도둑놈이 와서 훔쳐간 것이 아니라는 걸 나타내고 있는 거죠. And the reason why this Bible verse is very important because you know it wasn't a robber. Usually people steal tombstones to see if there's any treasures within inside. But you know it wasn't just the clothes weren't just all over the place. It was actually folded very nicely. 도둑놈이 훔쳐갔다 그러면 이 완전히 그이막 어디 정돈되겠어요? 그냥 그막그 빼가기 바쁠 텐데 잘 정돈된 데로 보니까. 그게 아니라 말이야 틀림없이. If you try to rob somebody's house, you're not going to make their bed. So that's that's what they're saying is that when they entered the tomb of Jesus Christ, what they did is that the clothes were very folded very neatly. So somebody was there that did this. 그러니까 분명히 그분은 살아 계시고 지금 여기 계시지 않고 나가셨다 벌써 한 얘기라. He was alive. It, it wasn't a robber. That was the whole point. It wasn't a robber. Somebody was within there alive. 저는 이 그. 여자들에게 이 소식을 전한 이 천사들의 마음은 그 기분은 어땠을까 한번 한번 생각해 봤어요. You know, I kind of wonder how, you know, if you were if think about think of your position of an angel when when you know what happened and when you tell these people about the news of what happened. 이, 이 아마 천사도 아마 상당히 기뻤을 것 같아요. 야, 이제 다 끝내셨다. 살아나셨다. 그런 마음 아니겠어요? For the angels for them to finally say it is finally Finished. This is finally happening. You know how happy must the angels be when they're able to tell people that this is finally it. This is it. 그런 무덤을 갖다 이렇게 보여주면서 정돈된 것을 다 보여주는 이 보여주는 건 뭐야? 너희 정말 일어나신 것은 믿어라 하는 그 마음이란 말이에요. 그 마음으로. What the angels' intention was is that look, here is the proof. He is gone. The doors open. The the clothes are nicely folded and tidy, and he is gone. It is it. This is it. it we are done. 그러니까 이 천사는 그 뜨거운 마음으로 너 정말 이 확실하지 않냐 믿을 수 있겠니? 아마 그런 마음이 들어 있는 거. For the angels, they were so happy because they're like, this is it, this is finally it. You know, can can you guys see it? Can you guys believe it? This happened. This is happening. So the the excitement within that message that was given. 내 말씀 보게 되면 이걸로 끝나는 것이 아니에요. 천사가 그 현장을 보여주고 난 다음에 이제는 하늘에서 내려올 때 하나님부터 이 받은 이 메시지를. Not only does he do that, but he also had a message that he got from God and wanted to relay that to the women that was there. 그게 바로 이 새벽에 찾아온 이 여인들에게 그 메시지를 주는 거예요. And this was the same message that was given early in the morning. The angel has given that. 이칠절 말씀 나타나고 있습니다. And that's in verse seven. 가서 그의 제자들과 베드로에게 이르기를 예수께서 너희보다 먼저 갈릴리로 가시나니. 전에 너희에게 말씀하신 대로 너희가 거기서 배우리라 하라 하는지라. But go, tell his disciples and and Peter that he is going before you into Galilee. There you will see him, and he he and he said to you. 이 여자들한테 얘기하는데 너희들 가가지고 제자들과 베드로한테 가서 얘기하라는 거예요. What the angel told the women, saying that I want you to see what you saw today, right now. I want you to go and tell the disciples right now. 
지금 베드로나 제자들은 어떤 상태입니까? Within the Peter, so understand the situation of what's going on with Peter and the disciples. They, what do you think is going on in their minds? 이 붙잡히가가 무서워요. 다 도망갔던 사람들. They are afraid because Jesus was killed. They think, oh my God, we are also going to get killed. They hit themselves, mark up room. They lock themselves in. 특히 이 베드로는 예수님을 저주하고 부인까지 했던 바로 그 사람. Now Peter, on top of that, was the one who betrayed Jesus Christ not once but three times. And on top of that, they're going to kill. Jesus. So he feels bad. Not only does he feel bad, but then he's also afraid because he's going to kill. 그 주님의 명령을 받고 말씀을 전하는 그 내용을 보게 되면 가서 제자들과 베드로에 가서 말하라 하고 얘기하고 계시는 거예요. And this is the complete tipping point. Everything will completely change because the angel told the women, saying that I want you to go tell the disciples that it is done. Everything is it. I want you to tell them that he is alive and he is going to you right now. 참이그 주님의 극진하신 사랑을 우리가 다시 한번 볼 수가 있죠. And this is the love of God that was that shown on here. 그걸 이 베드로가 난지 후회하면서 막 눈물 흘렸던 그것을 주님께서 다 보시고 다 아시고 내가 그래도 널 사랑한다. 네 회개를 다 받았다 하는 이런 마음이신 것 같아요. You know, Jesus Christ saying that you know I knew it was going to happen. I knew you were going to do this, and I I know you're sad. I know you're sorry, and God still forgives him despite of what Peter has done three times. 그리고 갈릴리로 가라 이런 얘기예요. And and. God said, and the angel told them, "Go to Galilee now." 내 마가복음 14장 4 28절 말씀 보게 되면은 이 돌아가시기 이전에 십자가에 못 박혀 돌아가시기 이전에 이미 내가 살아난 후에 너희가 먼저 갈릴리로 갈 것이다 하고 미리 말씀하셨던 걸로 It's interesting because in Matthew 14:28, what Jesus said is, "But after I have been raised, I will go before I will go before you to Galilee." 그러니까 예수님께서 이미 부활할 걸 이미 확실하게 알고. 또 그러한 데 무슨 일이 생길 거지 미리 아시고 미리 다 말씀하시는 것이죠. And Jesus Christ was telling the story like I, this is exactly what's going to happen. This is exactly what I'm going to do. And then Jesus Christ said, that, "I'm just going to go to you after I resurrect." 미리 십자가에 못 박혀 돌아가시 이전에 내가 부활하고 난 다음에 더 중요한 사역이 있으니까 새로운 사역이 시작될 것이니까 너희들 빨리 빨리 가서 거기서 기다려라 하는 거 미리 가고. Jesus Christ was telling the disciples, saying that you know not only is my death important, but after. After what happens is very important too. So I will go to you, and that's what he was telling them. 이걸 보게 되면은 예수님께서 십자가에서 못 박히 돌아가시기 이전의 그 사역보다도 그 이후의 사역이 너무나 중요한 사역이 있다는 것을 주님께서 이 말씀 통해서 하신 것을 알게 할수 있습니다. What Jesus Christ was telling the people is, what, it's not what happened before. It's not what the before. Of course, it's important, but what also happens after is even more important than what he has done before. 그 소리를 들은 이 여자들 중에 팔절 말씀이니까. 몹시 놀랐다고 생각하면 너무나 깜짝 놀래는 거죠. 막그 사건 보고 난 다음에. And they went out quickly and fled to the tomb, for they were trembled and were amazed. 그만 놀래가지고 무덤에서 확 튀어나가지 그냥 도망을 갔다고 얘기하고. For them, it's just kind of like they're like they're like this panic mode, like like deer in headlights. So they're just kind of panic, and all of a sudden they just started running. 근데 이제 몹시 놀라라고는 이 말씀이 나오는데 이이그이 몹시라는 것들을 보면은 헬라어로 하게 되면은 헬라어로 뭐냐면은 엑스타시스라고 되어 있습니다. And trembled and were amazed. Um, so it, within the Hebrew word, they actually use the word um, in Greek word ecstasy. 근데 영어로는 여러분들 아시는 말 마찬가지로 엑스타시입니다. And within the simple English, you the, you know the word ecstasy. 엑스타시는 뭐니까 정신이 있는 거, 황홀감에 빠진 거, 황홀공에 빠진 거막 이걸 나타내고 있지 않습니까? Um, so ecstasy, I guess, in, in a very simple term, is like you're like super happy, right? And, and you're you're over excited, you're over happy, and everything is just just amazing and great. 이 마약을 갖다가 엑스타시라고 이렇게 얘기하지 않습니까? 막 황홀공 이상한 정신 상태 들어가니까 그 엑스타시라고 그래가지고 마약 그 종류도 나타나고 있지 않습니까? And there is an actual drug called ecstasy, which which I guess does the same effect. No clue. 근데 마약으로 인한 이거 사단의 역사는 그런 엑스타시가 아니라 천사 얘기를 듣고 엑스타시에 들어갔다는 말이야. Ecstasy, we're talking about the state, right? Uh, the super excitement, super happy, everything is amazing. It's just a, it's just like a moment. They're just like they have no idea what to do. 요 상태를 마태복음 28장 8절 아주 잘 표현하고 있어요. And Matthew, Matthew 28, 8 kind of explains a little bit better. 그 여자들이 무서움과 큰 기쁨으로 빨리 무덤을 떠나. 제자들에게 알리려고 다른 짓을 했다고 얘기하고 있어요. So they went out quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy. 그러니까 막 천사를 보고 예수님께서 살아나셨다는 그 얘기도 그 깜짝 놀랐는데 현장을 보니까 정말로 예수님 없고 예수님 그그 세마포 호텔에 개져 있고 머리를 쌌던 수건이 다 머리에 개 있는 걸 모습 보면서 살아나셨구나 하는 그 마음 들으면서 무섭기도 하고 막 기쁘기도 하고 막 
제정신이 아니게 지금 이 그런 상태에 들어간 걸 나타내고. So for them, you know, they were afraid because they saw an angel. If you saw an angel, I'm pretty sure you'd be afraid. But at the same time, they're super happy and super excited because Jesus Christ is alive. So these 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 mixed emotions, they just they just didn't know what to do. 그러니까 그 소리 듣고 제자들한테 알리기 위해서 그냥 다른 데서 산에서 뛰어내려는 거야. For them, the women after seeing this and heard them, uh, the first thing that they did exactly what the angels told them, they went out to tell the disciples. 근데 그 마음이 어떻습니까 지금? But think about what was going through their minds. 그 두려움 만이나 황울경 큰 기쁨 막 황울경에 빠져가지고 와 하면서 막 그냥 막 뛰어내려는 거 아니겠어요? 정신을 쓰면. So, so for them, not only are they afraid, but they're excited. They're just like, yes, Jesus is alive. He, we, we saw him dead, but he is alive. This is good news. He, he didn't die. And, and so all these things that was going through their minds, they were excited. They were afraid. They, they were just in, in, in just a weird state. 아마 그 산에서 뛰어내면서 신발도 몇번 벗겨졌을 것 같아요. 아마 그 얘기는 안 나오는데 막막 때문에 정신을 쓰면 뛰어내려는 거예요. And I'm pretty sure they were just bumping into things, losing their sandals. They were just in, in panic mode. They just didn't care. They just they just they just moved. 저는 그이 그 여인들의 모습을 보면서 야 정말 이들이 예수님을 얼마나 사랑했으면 부활했다는 그 얘기도 그 이렇게 기쁨에 황금에 빠졌을까. And for the women, for them to who truly did love Jesus Christ, and just imagine their state, right? They 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 saw Jesus Christ be tortured. They saw him die. But to hear saying that is true. Like it, it, all of this is true. He is alive. He is God. Everything is so. Imagine how excited that they felt. 자기가 너무나 사랑하고 자기 생명 묻어서 사랑하시는 그 주님께서 부활하시다 그러니까 막그 기쁨이 넘쳐 이런 말도 할수 없는 뭐 황금이 빠져가지 그만 정신을 떠나는 거. For them, you know, they truly love this person. They truly love Jesus Christ. And the fact that you know who a, a, a person that they truly love disappeared but all of a sudden came back within their lives that excitement that happiness and that love and that joy that comes with it. And I truly do believe that they did really love God. 아마 생명보다도 더 사랑한 것이 이들이 아니었던 것이 아 if not they love their life or they love Jesus more than they love themselves. 그러니까 이 여인들이 이 엄청난 기쁨의 소식을 전하는 최초의 전달자가 되는 거예요. They were the first evangelists after the resurrection. 그 여자들이 하나님께서 주님께서 3년 동안 기했던 그 제자들에게 이 복음을 전하는 그 축복을 이 여자들이 받게 되는 거예요. It wasn't even the disciples. The 12 disciples chosen by Jesus Christ was actually the women. The women were the very first to receive the blessings of evangelism after the resurrection of Jesus Christ. 원래 같으면 제자들이 여인들한테 가서 하 주님이 살아나셨으면서 이 얘기하는 게 이것이 정상적인 방법 아닙니까 이게? You know you would think that it was the disciples who were privileged as the disciples to be the first to tell the people, the women, and everybody else to say that Jesus Christ is resurrected, He is alive. But no, it was the women, the courage, the women that took courage that was the first to receive. 근데 완전히 바뀐 거예요. 막 여자들이 제자들이 가서 예수님 살아나셨어요, 살아나셨어요. 가서 확인해 보세요. 이거를 지금 제 여자들이 하고 있는 거예요. The tables have turned because these weren't chosen specifically by Jesus Christ, but they were the first. They were the first to receive blessings. They were the first to take action. They were the first to evangelize to the disciples, saying that Jesus is resurrected. He is alive. 왜 그러냐? Why? 당연한 결과라는 거예요. It should be like this. 제자들이 주님을 사랑했지만 여자들은 주님을 제자들보다 더 사랑했다는 걸 나타내고 있는 거예요. That disciples did love Jesus Christ, but the actions, the women took that that love of actions was far superior than what the disciples did. 그러니까 주님께서 나타나셔 가지고 천사를 통해서 얘기하고 직접 또 제일 먼저 나타나셔 가지고 이 주님께서 이들에게 복음을 전했어요. And of course God's going to bless their action. Of course God's going to bless what the women did more than the disciples and the first one to receive a message from the angel, first one to evangelize. They deserved that. 그래 우리가 당연한 응답 받는 건 아주 쉽다는 것을 우리가 발견할 수 있다 말이에요. If you want to receive answer, if you want to receive the absolute which you deserve, you have to deserve that answer. 오늘 말씀을 보면서 우리가 당연한 응답에 대해서 이 이거 우리가 붙잡아야 되겠다는 말이죠. And when it comes to the rightful answer, you have to understand this correctly. 여러분 마가복음 8장 32절 말씀 보게 되면은 예수님께서 죽임을 당하고 살아나야 할 것을 가르쳤다고 이렇게 말씀하고 계시죠. In Mark 8:31, this is talking about when Jesus Christ would be rejected by his own people, by the Pharisees, and to resurrect afterwards. 주님께서 말씀하셨으면 어떻게 됩니까? 당연히 예수님께서 부활하시는 것은 당연하다는 거예요. Meaning, rifle ants, rifle thing, rifle ants, or rifle covenant means, of course, Jesus Christ is supposed to die. Of course, Jesus is supposed to resurrect after his death. 여러분 믿습니까? Do you believe that? 여러분 주님께서 주신 언약의 말씀은 
반드시 그렇게 된다는 것을 믿는 것이 중요하다 말이야. What you have to believe when it comes to the covenant, when it comes to the righteous covenant, it means you have to believe. Of course, this is supposed to happen. You believe in that. 그러니까 말, 말씀하셨으면은 그렇게 되는 것이 당연한 거예요. And for them, when you hear the word of God, when you see the word of God, you believe, of course, it's going to be fulfilled. Of course, it's the word of God. Of course, it's going to be exactly the way it's said. 말씀은 그렇지만은 나는 안 믿는다. The problem is not the word of God. The problem is you, right? You you hear the word of God, you're like maybe I think so, maybe not me. This is what's preventing you. 가장 중요한 것이 뭐냐? 언약은 당연한 것이다. The covenant is rightful. It will happen whether you believe it or not. 지난번에 말씀드렸습니다. 창세 6장 18절 보게 되면은 노아를 통해서 너와 방주를 너와 언약을 세우고 방주를 만들어서 네 가족을 살리겠다고 주님께서 말씀하셨어요. Genesis 6:18 was the last week's message saying that through you my uh, uh, but I will establish my covenant with you and you shall go into the ark. 이 언약을 잡았더니 그 노아는 가족은 당연히 살은 거예요. The importance is the cause and effect, right? Because you believe in the gospel, because you believe in the gospel. Then you were able to enter into the ark in, in that exact order. 이 지구상에는 모든 사람은 다 죽었는데 어떻게 노아 가족만 살았냐? 정말 기가 막힌 기적이다. 기적이 아니란 말이야 이것이. This isn't a miracle. It is rightful. It's supposed to happen this way. You believe in the covenant. You live. It's really simple as that. 네, 네가 언약에 들어가 살 것이다 했으면 하나님께서 언약 하시기 때문에 살게 된 거란 말이야. What the covenant here is saying that here's the covenant. Go into the covenant. You will live. It's very simple as that. Because that's what God said. That's important. So for you to find and search your covenant, search your word of God, it is that important then, isn't it? Genesis 37. Genesis 37. Genesis 37:9. Then he dreamed about another dream and told it to his brother, "Say, look, I have dreamed another dream. And this time, the sun and the moon and the eleven stars bowed down to me." 그런 이전 세계 지도자로 세울 것을 갖다 하나님께서 언약하신 거란 말이에요. The covenant that Joseph received is that he is going to be a leader of the world. 그렇다면은 요셉이 국무총리 되는 것은 당연한 거라. If that's the case, whatever and however he gets there, he will be a leader. 왜 당연한 것이냐? Why is that absolute? Because God said, this is going to happen. So what happened? Do you now understand the importance of the word of God? In 1 Samuel 16:12, this is what happens when uh, David becomes anointed. God simply said, I'm going to make him king. Anoint him as a king. 그 기름 부음 받았단 말이야. And David was, and he was anointed. 그러면은 왕이 되는 거예요. Then he is king. 하나님 약속하셨으니까. Because that's what God said, and this is exactly going to happen that way. 골리앗하고 싸움이 벌어졌어. And he fought with Goliath. 다윗이 보기에는 상대할 수 없는 어마어마한 심슨의 사람이야. Goliath is an individual. He's a giant. He's a beast, right? He can kill anybody. So he, they, the favors are against David. 어떤 상대가 있더라도 아무 문제 될 것이 없단 말이야. 하나님께서 왕이 될 거라고 말씀하셨으니까 이기는 건 당연하단 말이야. For David is interesting because he's saying that you know God, God said that I'm going to be king. So this really doesn't matter if Goliath is here. And at the end of the day, it doesn't matter who's in front of me. 지금 뭘 얘기하고 있습니까? Do you understand what's going on? The covenant is absolute. 말씀을 잡게 되면은 된다는 걸 나타내고 있단 말이에요. The word of God is absolute. Then just hang on to the word of God. Then. 그러면은 우리 믿음을 우리가 봐야 돼. 믿음이 그 다음에 중요하다는 걸 우리가 붙잡아야 돼. So if if the word of God is important, then what you need to fix is you. You need to fix your faith. 언약은 당연히 성취될 걸 안다고 그러면은 그 다음에 이 말씀, 이 언약의 말씀을 내가 어떻게 할 것이냐, 어떻게 나한테 적용해야 될 것이냐 이것을 붙잡아야 나의 것이 된단 말이지. If the word of God is going to be fulfilled with or without you, right? With or without you, the word of God is going to be fulfilled. Then you need to hang on to it and believe it for it to be applied in your life. 나에게 적용하는 거 이것이 바로 이거 뭐냐? 이것이 바로 믿음이란 말이에요. 믿음의 역사란 말이지. So for you to practically apply, for you to make this practical. In your life, that is called faith. 
요한봉 19장 30절 말씀 보게 되면 예수님께서 십자가에 못 박고 돌아가시면서 다 이뤘다 하시면서 돌아가셨어요. John 19:30 When Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, "It is finished." 그렇다면은 예수님께서 다 이루셨다 하게 되면은 그 언약을 이렇게 말씀하셨으면은 이것이 나한테 어떻게 적용이 되냐는 거예요. So let's really take practicality into this. So if Jesus Christ said within the Bible, say, "It is finished." Well, what does that even mean to me? What am I supposed to do with this word of God? 성경에는 분명히 다 이뤘다고 그랬는데 나는 안, 안 이루어지는 게 없어. So, so when you look at the problem of your life, the reality is, the practicality of it is, is the difficulty of that is, it is finished. I still have problems. It's not working. 근데 왜 그러죠 그게 지? Why do you think this is? 성경은 그렇지만 나는 안 믿고 있기 때문에 그렇단 말이야. Because the word of God says so, but you, it is you. You are not believing it. You are not practically applying this word of God within your life. 그것이 실질적으로 이루어지는 것은 믿음을 통해서 이루어지는 것입니다. So for you to apply this practically, first of all, you have to believe. You have the faith. You have to have the faith to believe this will work. 우리가 그리스도인이라고 있습니다. And we talk about Christ afterwards. 요한복음 십사장 육절 보게 되면 하나님 만날 수 있는 유일한 길이라고 주님께서 말씀하셨단 말이죠. John 14:6 says, "I am the way, truth, and the life. No one else can come to the Father except through me." 그렇다면 나의 모든 지옥 배경이 끝났다. When everything is finished, then you must have the faith to believe that this is it. This is finished. 그것이 내가 나의 배경을 받아들이게 될때 나에게 그 실제로 그때 성취가 된단 말이야. When you believe this, you must first have the faith to believe that it will work. It will. It will. This thing will work, and you must apply that within your life. 마가복음 10장 45절 보게 되면 내 죄를 해결해서 오셨다. 내 대속 내 죄를 대속하게 오셨다고 말씀하셨단 말이야. John 10:45 For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. 그럼 십자가에 못 박혀 돌아가시면 내 죄가 모든 걸 용서함 받았다는 걸 나타내는 단 말이야. When Jesus Christ has died on the cross, means your sins are forgiven. Every sin that you have committed. It, it is forgiven. It is done. 그것이 언제나한테 적용이 됩니까? When does that apply within your life? 예수님 믿어야지. You believe. You believe in Jesus Christ first of all, saying that He has died on the cross. Your sins, everything that you have done, is forgiven already. 믿지 않으면은 성경에 기록해 돼 있는데 나는 그게 아니에요. When you don't believe this, this is where where the the doubt comes in, saying that well, I don't think this really works for me. 이 믿음이 당연히 있어야 된단 말이야. That you must have the faith to believe that Jesus Christ said it is finished, and your sins are forgiven. That is key. That is very important. John 3:8. 마귀 일을 멸하기 위해서 오셨다고 말씀하고 있는 거예요. John 3:8 says, for the purpose the Son of God was manifested that He destroyed the work of the devil. 그것을 내가 믿어야 마귀에서 해방되는 거예요. You must believe it for you to be free from Satan's work, Satan's power, Satan's influence. 안 믿으면은. 나에게 있는 마귀가 그대로 여사를 똑같이 해야 해방을 받을 수가 없어요. If you don't believe this, then you don't have a choice. You don't have the faith. You don't have the practicality saying that Satan is attacking you now. He is clearly attacking you now. And if you don't hang on to this, you can't be free from that. 그리스도니까 십자가에서 못 박혀 돌아가셨음에도 불구하고 나하고는 아무 상관이 없어. For you, here's what's going on. Jesus Christ has died on the cross for you, but it has nothing. It doesn't matter to you because you're not applying any of that to your life. What is the difference between how you believe and not? Faith. You must believe this works. This happens. Believe in that. Romans 8:1-2. Romans 8:1-2. 그리스도 예수 안에 있는 자에게는 결코 정죄함이 없나니 그리스도 예수 안에 있는 생명의 성령의 법이 죄와 사망의 법에서 너를 해방하였습니다. There's therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but to the Spirit, for the law is the Spirit of life, and in Christ Jesus Christ has set me from the laws of sin. 우리에겐 정죄함이 없고 죄와 사망의 법에서 완전히 해방 받았다고 얘기하고 있는 거예요. You are free from the laws of sins and death. 성경에서 이렇게 얘기하는데 내가 안 믿으면 아무 것도 아니라. If you don't believe this, you will be within the laws of sins and death. 이것은 믿을 때 나이가 있을 줄 믿습니다. If you believe in this. You will be able. You will be able to apply this within your life. What do you mean? The big question is, well, how do I believe that? 여러분, 말씀 못 듣고 기도에 들어가시기 바랍니다. With the word of God, pray with that. 여러분, 호흡 좀 하시기 바랍니다. You know, share this word of God for an hour. 아무리 복음이 떨어져도 포럼하지 않고 말씀 묵상하지 않고 기도하지 않으면은 나에게 아무도 소용이 없어요. 마귀의 도구밖에 안 돼요. If if You keep this word of God. You you have to find ways to apply. You talk with each other with the word of God. You communicate with each other about the word of God. You have forums. You talk about it. You think about it. That's the key to all of this. 말씀을 먹고 말씀을 각인을 시켜야 돼. So you have to find the way to apply it within your life. Whatever it takes for you to apply the word of God, find 
the way. You know, this thing, you have to have patience, right? 뿌리, this doesn't happen in a day. You have to have this word of God take root. You have to have this word of God take root. You have to be patient when you do this. You can't, this happen, doesn't happen in a day when you do this. 그게 말씀 쭈아로 묵상하면서 쭈아로 기도하면서 계속 하게 될 때, 정말 성령께서 말씀을 통해서 말씀 영이시기 때문에 성령께서 역사시 시작한다 말이에요. When you hang on to the word of God, when you pray with the word of God, something happens. It changes little by little by little. It gets deeply rooted, and something happens. The Holy Spirit works when you do this. 아 오늘 목사님 말씀하셨으니까 아 그거 알았어. 나도 그 믿어야 되겠구만. When you sit here, 95% of you sit here and say, "Oh, yeah, that was a good message. I think I'll do it." And that's all you do. It's what you do after with this message. It's what you do with this message is more important than what you're listening to right now. Ah, 정말이네. 그렇구나. 믿으면 되는 거 아니야? First of all, you have to believe in the faith and saying that this works. Something happens. Something will change. I will receive answers. You have to have that faith before you do anything else. 아무것도 아닌 것 같지만은 그 하나 딱 느끼는 순간에 내 문제가 해결돼 버려요. And you have to understand without this faith. The results are very vastly different. The results that you're looking for will be vastly different. If you don't have the faith, it may work. It may not work. It's, it's, it's going to be different of how you approach your problems. That is why your habits, your habits define your answers. Your habits define your nature. Your habits define everything that you do. So you must change your habits. 여러분 이렇게 되게 되면은 우리에게는 당연한 응답이 올 수밖에 없어요. If you do this, if you do this, and you you deserve an answer. You you rightfully deserve an answer from God. 여러분 사도 바울이 그 유라굴로 그 태풍 앞에서 많은 사람들에게 선언한 이 얘기를 여러분 다시 한번 꼭 기억하시기 바랍니다. And as Paul said to the, the people that was within the midst of the storms, within the boat, this is what he told the people that was dying. 그러므로 여러분이여 안심하라. 나는 내게 말씀하신 그대로 되리라고 하나님을 Therefore, take heart, men, for I believe that believe God that it will be just as it was told to me. 여러분 이 사도 바울은 말씀을 그대로 믿었던 거예요. Paul literally believed in the word of God. 그러니까 그대로 되는 거예요. So what he says, like this is going to happen, so it's going to happen. 그러니까 말씀이 되는 거 그대로 성취가 되는 거라고 그런 거예요. For him, you know, he he believes that word of God is going to be fulfilled. So whether it's him or not, you know, he didn't decide, but he's saying this is going to happen, so it happens. 이것이 꼭 붙잡으시기 바랍니다. So this is what you have to hang on to. 지금 우리에게 어떤 문제가 있다 하더라도 이것을 잡게 되면 틀림없이 해결된단 말이에요. If you hang on to the word of God. 누가복음 10장 19절 말씀. Your problem doesn't matter. So Luke 10, 19. 내가 너에게 뱀과 정갈을 밟으며 원세의 모든 능력을 제어할 권세를 주었으니 너희를 해치자가 결코 없으리라. Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and all the power of the enemies, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. 여러분 믿습니까? Do you believe this? 의심하지 않고 믿고 기도하게 될 때는 반드시 응답의 역사 나타날 줄 믿습니다. If you truly believe, that if you pray, something happens. If you have that faith, and if you do it, something will happen. 여러분, 우리에게는 어마어마한 권세가 주어져 있어요. You know, you have power. You have this amazing spiritual authority, but you just don't know how to use it. 하늘과 땅의 모든 권세를 가지신 주님, 그 부활하신 주님께서 우리 속에 계시지 않습니까 you know, 지금? You know, Jesus Christ who has resurrected, who has created the heaven, created the earth, He has the power to do whatever He wants in this world. He is with you. You have this authority. You have this power. 그분을 지금 속에 누려 주십니까? 이게 안에 계신가 한번 느껴 보세요 지금. Do you understand the depth of the power that you possess? This this amazing like infinite power that is within you right now. 여러분 가슴 한번 손 대보세요. 주님 안에 계신가 한번 한한 손도 한번 대보세요. That if you put your heart hand in your heart. 가만히 계시면 한번 대보시래니까. And, and put so put your hand in your heart and think about this for a bit. 안에 계십니까? Is he with you right now? 확실합니까? Do you are you assured of it? 어 그러면 믿으면 되는 거예요. Then you believe if he's there, he's there. 나는 못 하지만 그분이 하시면 돼. 믿습니까? You can't do it, but God can do it. 아무것도 아니라. It's nothing to God. 주님께서 하신 믿고 예수님 이름으로 명령하면 주님께서 역사하신다 말이에요. So it is not about you. It is about God. If God has the power to do, do all of this, then God can do it, and He will do it. It's really simple as that. 그럼 성취될 수밖에 없다는 거예요. Then the word of God will be fulfilled. 한 가지 여러분 기도하시기 바랍니다. One thing that you have to pray. 누가복음 십일 장 십삼 절. Luke eleven thirteen. 날마다 기도하시기 바랍니다. Every day pray. 너희가 악할지라도. 좋은 것을 자식에게 줄줄 알거든 하물며 너희 하늘 아버지께서 구하는 자에게 성령을 주지 않겠느냐? If you then being evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? 여러분 계속 놓고 기도하시기 바랍니다. So continue to pray with us. 내 안에 안에 계신 주님께서는 
우리에게 성령의 충만함을 주시기 위해서 정말 기다리고 기다리신 분이 바로 그분이시라. If, if there's only one thing, if there's only one thing that God wanted to give you, it is the Holy Spirit. Period. 나를 통해서 능력으로 역사하시기를 기대하고 기대하신 분이 바로 그분이시라. What God is so waiting is entire, entire, your entire life that He is just wanting every single day, want you filled with the power and the filling of the Holy Spirit. That's it. 주님, 주님께서 친히 말씀하신 네가 악해도 너희들이 악해도 자식한테 좋은 것을 주지 않겠느냐? 너희를 위해서 십자가에 자식까지 못 박혀 돌아가게 하신 그 주님께서 하나님께서 What God Himself is saying is, no matter how horrible of a human being you are, no matter how trashy, worthless piece of human being you may be, that God is still willing to fill you with the Holy Spirit, just like any human being would do good things for their children. Then it will happen. 여러분 문제 있습니까? Do you have a problem? 이번에 이거 놓고 한 기도에만 해보세요. Pray with this. 소론에 말씀드렸던 이 토마스 선교사님처럼 정말 간절하게 놓고. Just like the introduction, when this missionary Thomas, when he prayed with sincerity, the importance is he prayed, and something happened. 이 새벽에 그 무덤을 찾아갔던 그 뜨거운 사랑으로 주님을 만나러 갔던 그 여자들처럼 뜨거운 사랑으로 한번 기도해 보시기 바랍니다. With the heart and the passion that these women had for Jesus Christ, and they literally took action, sacrificed themselves to go there and look at the result. Look what happened to them. If you do that, how can you not receive answers? I'm going to come to conclusion. Mark 11, 24. This is what Jesus Christ said. 그러므로 내가 너희에게 말하노니 무엇이든지 기도하고 구하는 것은 받은 줄로 믿으라. 그리하면 너희에게 그대로 되리라. Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you will have them. 여러분. 토마스 선교사님이 돌아가실 때 아무 기도하지 않았다면 아마 능력이 그런 열매가 안 났을지도 몰라요. The, the key difference in the butterfly effect that you have to understand. If Thomas did not pray, you will not be sitting here. 이 조선 백성들을 향한 이 무지한 영적으로 무지한 조선 백성들을 향한 그 뜨거운 사랑을 가지고 정말 간절히 기도할 때 하나님께 그 기도서를 들으시고 응답하신 것이 지금 우리 열매가 이렇게 됐단 말이죠. It's important because that simple action of the passion and the final prayer that Thomas did for the sake of Christ, for the sake of the people, for his true love of the gospel, because of that one final simple prayer, look at the results. 여러분, 여러분 자신을 위해서 한번 기도 본적 있습니까? Have you really prayed for yourself and, and not lying to other people, not putting a mask for the people? See, I mean, really, truly pray for yourself. 하나님, 난 정말 내 영적 문제 이런 것이 있습니다. 이것쯤 해결되기를 원합니다. So, so you would pray to God saying that God, I have this problem that 그걸로, I cannot solve. 그걸로 진짜 간절히 한번 기도해 보세요. Have you really prayed about that problem? 거기서부터 문제가 해결되기 시작하는 거예요. Then you will, then God will give you an answer and God will show you the way. 그다음에 우리 자녀들로 그렇게 기도하시기 바랍니다. And then pray for your, I mean, children or your family. 하나님 정말 내 자녀를 불쌍히 여겨 주시고 도와주세요. You know, really. You know, take care of my kids. Really love my parents. Really love my siblings. Thomas 선교사는 자기 자녀도 아니고 이 백성들을 위해서 기도했는데 응답했는데 자기 자녀를 위해서 기도하는. You know, Thomas didn't know these people. I mean, they were going to kill him for crying out loud. But he still prayed for these people. And I mean, you as an individual could at least, at least pray for your your own family members. 자녀들이 영적으로 고통 당하는데 눈물도 안 납니까? So if your children are spiritually suffering, I mean, does that not sad? Does is that not a sad thing for you? 그렇게 냉정합니까 자녀들에 대해서? Are you that ruthless for you to say your family is having a hard time? They're suffering. Are you? Do you really? Are you really that? Lack, are you really that horrific to not care? 자녀를 위해서 기도하지 않으면 무엇을 위해서 삽니까 이 땅에서? If you don't even pray for, uh, I mean, let alone yourself, but if you can't even pray for your family, like, what, what, what else is there for? 정말 기도하시길 바랍니다. Truly pray for it. 응답해 주신다고 그러잖아요. Because God will answer you. 기도하고 구하는 것은 받은 줄 믿으라고 그랬단 말이에요. It says pray and you receive answers. 내가 정말 기도하겠다는 반드시 응답이 있을 줄 믿습니다. If you pray, God will answer. 오늘 마지막 말씀, 너희에게 그대로 되리라. And saying that you will. Have them. That's exactly what he said. 응답받는 여러분들 시기를 예수께서 축원합니다. Then truly receive this answer in the name of Jesus Christ. 말씀도 한번 기도하겠습니다. Let's pray the message that received. 하나님 감사합니다. 오늘도 하나님께 주신 이 말씀을 통하여 다시 한번 새 힘받게 하시고 응답받는 축복 역사가 나타나게 하여 주옵소서. 
아버지 하나님 참으로 도와주시기를 원하고 기도합니다 우리에게 산적되어 있는 이 모든 문제 이것을 놓고 정말 기도하게 하시고 아버지 하나님 정말로 주님의 쓰임받는 제자로서 부족함이 없는 영적인 상태 또 아버지 하나님 힘을 얻는 상태가 되게 하여 주십시오 일 통해서 아버지 하나님 우리 자신이 살게 하시고 또 가정이 살게 하시고 이웃을 살릴 수 있는 축복의 역사가 나타날 수 있도록 은혜 내려 주시옵소서 하나님 감사합니다 모든 양금 받아주시고 뜻을 이룰 수 있도록 역사해 주시옵소서 감사합니다. 하나님 감사합니다 오늘도 하나님께서 주신 이 말씀이 이한 주간 아니 평생의 언약이 되게 하여 주옵소서 하나님 이 말씀이 또 없어지는 마귀에게 빼앗기는 복음의 말씀이 아니라 가슴에 새겨지는 뿌리가 내려지는 말씀이 될수 있도록 우리 성도들을 축복하여 주옵소서 그래서 사실적으로 성취가 되는 당연한 응답을 누리는 우리 모든 승리의 성도들이 되게 하여 주옵소서 감사드리며 살아계신 예수님 이름으로 기도합니다 아멘